Hi, today we're going to talk about transitioning to Angular 2.0. Part of this transition looks like refactoring our code into directive based components. Before we get to that though, we're going to first start out with a base project. This base project we're going to base off of John Papa's hot towel project and to speed things up we're going to use his hot towel generator that uses Yeoman to generate the project. So if you go to github.com, John Papa, you can see he's got several different repositories, and one of them is the Generator Hot Towel. Um, this project here, if we scroll down just a little bit, <clears throat> has a couple of prerequisites. Um, we need to have Node installed. I assume that you already have that handled. And then we need to go ahead and install a couple of uh, items here, one of them being Yeoman. So I'm going to run npm install g to install it globally. and I am going to install Yeoman. In my case, I already have Yeoman installed, so I believe this is just going to check to see if there's an update and um, update my global, if so. Um, also in here, there, there are some instructions on how to not require sudo. If you've not already done this, if you've not already looked at, at how to do this, I strongly recommend it. Um, makes the, the NPM uh, global a lot easier to work with. So in this case here, Yeoman is now done. And now we are going to go ahead and install a couple of the other dependencies uh, globally as well. So in our case, we're going to install Bower, we're going to install Gulp, and we're going to install Nodemon. Again, I actually have all three of these already installed, so it's just going to check to see if there's an update and see what we can do to update those. So while that is running, the next step that we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing the hot towel generator itself. So with Yeoman, you can generate templates, projects to uh, generate out. And so that'll be our next step is we'll want to go ahead and pull in John Papa's hot towel generator so that we can um, then turn around and use it. So again, npm install dash g generator hot towel. There we go. Um, Let's go ahead and install that. Now, the next step after that is we're going to need a directory to create it in. So wherever we actually kick off this generator, that's where it's going to generate all of our code into. So this should be done in just one second. There we go. So now I'm going to go ahead and create a project called Hot Towel. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and go to that directory and now I'm going to run Yeoman. I do that by typing yo and then I tell it the name of the template that I want to use and I want to tell it the name hot towel. Um, so the second one, the second hot towel is the name of the project. The first hot towel is the name of the template. It's a little confusing um, since I named the, uh, the project, the same name as the, the uh, generator, uh, the Yeoman template. So um, as you can see here, Yo, Hot Towel, and then the name of the app. So we're going to go ahead and kick that off. And so while that's running, I'm going to talk a little bit about what are some of the things that the Hot Towel project provides. Well, the Hot Towel project uh, that's generated here uh, uses Gulp extensively. And with that, it gives you a lot of features that you're going to want right out of the, out of the gate. So it, it has linting. So by running Gulp Vet, this will run JS Hint using JSCS and Play-Doh. Invaluable for making sure that your code's up to par and that um, it's following all the coding standards that are typical. You can also customize those to your organization's um, particular um, specification. Let's see here, the next one is tests. You can run unit tests using gulp test. You can also use gulp auto test. Um, both of those will run the tests and uh, give you the output of um, what the status on those is. You can also run gulp serve um, specs and that'll actually run it in a browser. There's a specs HTML file that is generated and uh, that is another way you can run the tests. Um, typically you'll be running your code in dev mode uh, that looks like just running gulp serve dev. This will go ahead and um, open it in a browser and it updates the browser uh, with any file changes. So instead of having to constantly refresh your browser, it'll handle that for you. It'll also 
handle browser sync. Um, that way you can, if you have not used browser sync before, I'd suggest that you actually go look that up and, and see the advantages there. However, it allows you to pull up multiple browsers, and as you click on one, it'll go ahead and move it, uh, do that, perform that same action on another. And let's see here. So it looks like uh, it is done generating. This happens often where the NPM install sometimes fails here. So we're going to go ahead and just run it again and let that go and, and see if it, that doesn't resolve this time. Um, so also, we can build the project. Um, this does an optimized build. This will take and combine and minify all the CSS into an application and library version of CSS as, the, as well as with JavaScript and they'll place these into the build folder. We can also run this optimized code using gulp serve, serve, <clears throat> excuse me, gulp serve build, and we can run our optimized code um, in the browser and be able to see how that works. So the structure for this project is pretty simple. Um, everything's pretty much contained inside a source. Inside a source, there's a, a client folder, um, and, um, and with that, there's your app and your content. Um, let's see here, installing packages. This is what we're doing right now. And we've ran npm install. The npm install has um, some additional features to it where when you run an npm install, as soon as it's done, it will go ahead and run Bower install. Um, let's see here. It also uses WireDep, and WireDep is used to automatically inject your dependencies from uh, your Bower dependencies into your index.html. This makes it simple so that you don't, you no longer have to maintain that and uh, maintain when you add new modules, when you add new directives or controllers, those automatically get added. So, and looks like we still have a problem here. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and remove our node modules folder and kick this off one last time, see if we can get this to work. And I'm going to use sudo rmfr, so this does it recursively and silently. And let's go ahead and remove that. All right, go through this one more time. All right, so the modules themselves, um, you have our app level module. Then we have app admin, which has core and widgets. We have dashboard, layout. Um, we have widgets, um, core itself. There's its dependencies. We'll cover this in, in more detail in a minute. The main thing to understand there with the modules is that because it's modular based, we can add and remove modules um, just by requiring them in based on other modules. and um, that allows us to bring features in and out of the application without having to remove them um, from the uh, loaded source code. So uh, there's also a couple of blo um, blocks modules here, and the block modules are reusable blocks of code. Um, I'm just reading this here. Reusable blocks of code that can be used across projects simply by including them as dependencies. So there's a logger one, there's an exception one, and there's a router module. Um, those are all pretty simple. They provide additional functionality and um, makes it easy so you don't have to write those every single time. So this gets into the gulp task a little more, more verbose about what what you can do and um, what some of the additional features are. So let's see here. Um, Scrolling through, you can see all the different, a lot of different commands here, including um, bumping versions. So it'll help you manage your versions. All right, here. And it looks like we're still having a problem there on buffer util. So we're going to go ahead and load the project. And I think that we'll see that it actually will load and will work. Right, so. My uh, preference is to use WebStorm. You can use whatever tool you want, whether it be Sublime or some other tool. And I accidentally opened the wrong project. All right, so let's do this again. 
repo playground and there we go hot towel there we go so as you can see here's our source here's our node modules we're going to go ahead and run i believe we're going to need to run bower install since that did not complete And it looks like our install is with NPM is still causing problems. So we'll attempt to do this from WebStorm and see if we get a better result. Excellent. Looks like we now got past that issue. And now we've loaded our Bower components and gulp serve dev. So let's go ahead and run our project. Excellent. So now what you can see here is we have our project. It's up and running. It went ahead and served it up. Um, the pages are pretty simple here. Really, we basically have four components on here. Um, all of them are hard-coded, nothing, nothing too complicated going on here. And uh, we've got an admin page, which again, this is um, really not doing much of anything. Really the project here is a starting point. And so what we're gonna look at doing now is, we've talked about some of the great features, including, including browser sync. I wanna demo that to you very, very quickly here. So I'm just gonna pull up Safari. And I am going to go to localhost 3000. And so let's move this over just a little bit. And now um, it's also responsive, as you can see. I went ahead and stacked that gracefully. Um, now over here, I'm going to go ahead and switch to admin. Um, and this is with my Chrome browser. And I click on admin. And if you notice over here, it also made the same change over here. So that's part of browser sync. You can actually have. Um, Four different browsers open and have it synchronized between them and allows you to be able to test uh, a little more quickly on how things look and some of that functionality so um, what's not great about this project well i think the great things far outweigh the things that aren't great about it however let's talk about this a little bit so when we dig into the client folder here, this is great. We've got our app, we've got images, we've got styles, we've got test helpers. Uh, we got our wire dependencies with our index HTML. I, I don't have to go in and maintain this list of modules as we add them. Or if I add new Bower libraries, I don't have to manage those either. Those automatically get handled for me. Um, it's got a great build routine, um, creates highly optimized code. Uh, those, are, those are all great things. What we found though is, and why this project's perfect for uh, what we want to do today, is it is primarily controllers and views. So what do I mean by that? Well, when we open this up, we've got a controller, and although it's not very big, and frankly it doesn't have that much functionality, um, it, is, it is based on the controller view paradigm. So here's our controller, instead of it being a nice, thin, lightweight controller, um, it has quite a bit to it, and our view here has a, a lot of code to it as well. So and what I mean by this is that none of this is reusable. Um, everything that's contained in, in Dashboard stays in Dashboard. I'm not able to replicate this into another project or, or into another uh, page. Um, it would be nice that if we had the, the need here that I could pull this people grid and I could place it on another page 
Um, the this little container here we see everywhere. Uh, well, between the two pages we see we have a people container here. We have a hot towel container. Uh, and then over here we have a little admin container. They all basically do the same thing. However, this is repeated functionality that is not reusable at this point um, without copying and pasting that in. So um, there's also the folder structure. Let's take a look at that really quick. So the, we've got blocks, we've got core, we've got layout, we've got widgets, um, and then we've got dashboard and admin. So inside of our our app, we have our feature pages, admin and dashboard. Well, in a project this small, that's not a big deal. Two pages, four pages, six pages, fine. If it had 50 pages, we'd soon be cluttering our app folder here, and it'd be very difficult to find stuff. Um, especially when if we started doing re, uh, when we start doing reusable components, um, then this is going to just become a, a mess. So we want to reorganize this a little bit. So, um, and the other thing when we look at the data, so I'll come back over here to the controller. Here's our data service. We are making calls to go get the data directly um, instead of using perhaps like a route resolve. So, um, the other thing though we do like about it is how modular this is. So, that's one thing we did not cover. So, we have our dashboard. Uh, controller. We have the spec that goes with it. So here's the test that tests the controller. Here's all the HTML necessary for dashboard. And here's the module that declares dashboard. Here's our route um, for dashboard. So this uses um, with our route here, each one of these uh, has its, uh, each, each controller, each feature page here has its own route. Uh, defined in its own module, and it indicates here's where we're going to get the HTML from. We're going to use the dashboard controller, and uh, we're going to use the controller as syntax, which we like, and um, that this helps us get away from scope. And here's our title, and here's uh, some settings as well. Uh, the one thing that, again that we don't see is we don't see a resolve that would allow us to inject our data directly into the dashboard uh, controller. Mm -hmm. um, since our data loads with this are very, very fast and we're not dealing with any latency, um, using a resolve uh, could potentially um, help us speed up our, our process. All right, so that's pretty much everything I wanted to get covered in this video. In our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to refactor this code. We're going to take our admin and our dashboard. We're going to move those into a features folder under app. And then we are going to create our first component-based directive. All right, thanks so much for listening today and watch for our next video.